one MSN3 are flying, MSN2, MSN4, as you can see, um, they will be very close together in flying um, in the next couple of weeks, MSN5 in spring. And our target, what we're working is on key three, have the type simplification of the, of, the, of the aircraft, of the Dash 900, and to be able to deliver to our first large customer in the fourth board. That's all about um, the flight test side. I would like to put some, some words on the on um, the industrial ramp up. I was very interested in listening yesterday the, the, the partnering of uh, for success. Um, so I don't, we don't have a fancy name for that, um, or I'm sorry, a, a branded name for that. This is a, we started that actually very early in the program um, with our risk sharing partner concept means uh, working with our suppliers. Um, to, to make a, a conjunction development and, and supporting them and they, and they supporting us as well. What's the next challenge? next challenge is of course the, the ramp up. Um, we, these are our ramp up gates. The green line is a, a demonstration of starts or final assembly line. It's, um, and then it, that's upstream on our supply side obviously much earlier. But these are the starts of final assembly line. We have, uh, we're now on rate 1, and the objective is to be on rate 3 by end of the year. So the, 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 the strategy is to have a mature aircraft, the, uh, the, the flight is coming half the time in case, and only then really, really ramp up. So what are the five priorities we need to focus in order to make, uh, to make that happen? It's basically a, a stable design, which um, by all the test means we put in, uh, in advance, um, we have been very, very successful in that one. Um, work with the critical supplier. I, I like more the word strategic suppliers uh, because critical doesn't mean um, doesn't mean bad. It's more the, the important supplier suppliers which are delivering big, big integrated work packages. Um, control the missing parts um, in the program and development. There will always be um, there will always be shuttling work. The important part here is to understand with quality gates what is the content of, of any uh, travel work, if, uh, if, if, if it is, in order to prepare the next uh, station in the pre or the final assembly line, just to be able to coordinate and integrate whatever work might be left. Quality, of course, that's a key driver for, for stability and our customization policy. How are we doing that in the US? And this is exactly what, uh, what my role with my team does. Is Working, working uh, with our suppliers and all the program management tasks, uh, preparing with them um, the types of education, working with our suppliers um, in making making the, the definition dossier documents. Just in mind, we're, we're here in the we're here in the West Coast, we're in Seattle, and in California, lots of uh, our customer, uh, suppliers in California. Um, a California engineer working with a German or uh, an engineer sitting in Hamburg and Toulouse. It's in fact nine hours time difference. So the effective overlap of working hours between these two engineering offices is, is two hours. So what we're doing is basically bringing um, knowledge, average knowledge, close to, to, to our suppliers and um, enhance, get, uh, get a longer effective working, working day with them. Um, if, if there are questions so we, that we're able to, to respond to them immediately. And if indeed, it can't be responded immediately, uh, then um, we have um, knowledge of people who knows who in Airbus can answer these questions. So that's, that's a very, very um, cooperation uh, oriented uh, work which, which is turning out to be uh, very good. So we are, we are doing very, very good experience in that. Couple of words on, um, on our customers, uh, and in particular our um, launching customers. So we had 812 orders. Um, this is from 39 customers. We are in all, about, all over the world. Um, we have uh, 189 for the Dash 1000. Um, our launch customer would be Qatar, as you know. That's MSN 6. So MSN 6 is the first aircraft, the first non flight test aircraft. It's, a, it's the first custom aircraft. MSN 6 went into the FAL. Um, in end of this year, Christmas time. So now, you're up in the industry. We have an aircraft in the FAD. Our objective 
expected to be uh, to be delivering the aircraft in Q4 this year. That means in, in the, you know, the most narrow window be nine months. Having an aircraft in our final assembly are they pre-assembled with with major components and system installation and making that in nine months, it's not number one, it's number six. It's actually absolutely realistic. It's not it's nothing crazy, it's absolutely realistic. It's not gonna be a walk in the park, but um, it is an absolutely realistic um, um, flight plan we have for, for our first customer aircraft. An important enabler, as we say, for the ramp up as well as the customization. And we had very interesting discussion yesterday, or we hear a very interesting discussion yesterday about um, standardization versus customization. So our, our approaches um, have, we have decided to go for a catalog approach. A catalog approach means that whatever um, an airline selects from our catalog, the catalog is very rich. The catalog is very rich, the catalog is adapted on what the market needs are, what the market needs will be. And um, as long as the, we, we, we're, we're driving and, and you know, working with our customers in order to, to define uh, what they want to select from the catalog. So the point is, as soon as we select something from the catalog, we know that this design solution actually works and can be done in there. And it is even pre-developed, because all the catalog items today were in the process of pre-developing them. So whatever, whatever is chosen from the catalog is already pre-developed and we know we can fit in the aircraft, the loads are clear, the electrical connections are clear, so we don't, we don't see any, any problems um, later on in the, in, 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 the, in the design or production phase. So how do we do that? It's basically we're using a couple of tools. Um, we have the, the mock-up center in Toulouse. Um, we have the customer definition center. The customer definition center is really um, a, a definition tool where, where we have all what is in the catalog there and uh, the airline can come and play with it. Uh, and uh, very, very interesting to see if we have uh, free open suppliers, we have free opens, and then comes the, comes the customer and say, okay, let's see which of these free opens makes, makes my spaghetti better. So that's, that's a very, very interesting and new, new approach of um, basically helping and guiding our supplier, our customers to select um, their product. And then uh, a configurator, um, something like uh, similar to a, to a car configurator. Uh, the difference is here we're really having is these are not these are not only nice picture data, these are really DMU data, data digital mock-up data which are pre-developed. That's a Kevin um, definition center in Hamburg, so whatever you have the time there will be the um, in T-Rex when Hamburg in, in April, so if if you have the time feel free to go and have a visit to the to the um, to the C B C the customer definition center. Just some work on the timing on the Dash 1000. Uh, the Dash 1000 is um, our, our, our big airplane. These are the main changes, basically, is plus 11 frames. Um, the bigger engine with 97 pound thrust. Um, the most visible feature or difference would be the, the 6 booby landing gear versus the 4 booby landing gear. Uh, which we have in the, in the Dash 100 and Dash 800 and Dash, 800 and Dash 900. Um, we'll have on the Dash 1000 a revised trading edge uh, because of the slightly bigger uh, surface of the wing. Other than that, um, we, we are also uh, pursuing a high system commonality. Uh, so, and the structure is really reinforced only where it's needed, so that's not a complete reason. That's why we consider the Dash 1000 as a Relatively low risk uh, development. The, uh, that's, that's overall the, 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 the planning. Um, uh, the, design, the design freeze is always, there's different interpretation of design freeze. So I, I really like to draw your focus on, on what's coming up. We have, we, have, we have our design, what we're doing now, we're entering now into the design phase. And we have dropped the data to the big toolings, to the long lead items. So all that is that so we're now in the detailed design phase. Um, working with our suppliers in order to um, have the, the, the start of the final assembly line somewhere 2015, uh, first flight 16 and um, enter into service in mid-17. Mid so we'll uh, see as well the first engine run today, so, um, not today, I'm sorry, this year. Um, we have Rolls-Royce here. 
So that, that's, that's on the Dash 4000. In a, in a summary, and, and what are the next steps? It's important, and today we're very confident that we'll make the certification in Q4, in Q3 this year and the entry to service in Q4. Um, we're going to deliver a very mature aircraft because all this zero means we had doing in a pre-flight test program, the flight test program is, is confirming that for the moment. Um, it is important that we keep our ramp up gates, that we keep our ramp up gates with our suppliers and not to have um, put the quality into the system um, while we're ramping up. Yeah, the new customization policy is key for us. Yeah, and we want to capitalize on our family position uh, to come to Simon's point to increase our market share. That's all I have.